Hello, everyone. I, I just wanted to make some remarks about our next reading, A Problem in Modern Ethics by John Addington Simmons. This is a book that I've looked for for a long time, uh, looked for a book like it for a long time. It seems to me that uh, part of our class, especially the sort of later readings, after we've kind of reviewed the history of Western political thought, we read some remarkable texts by people who, who might be said to have been uh, ignored, if not marginalized by that thought. Uh, we, we've already looked at it, at least one such uh, voice uh, in Mary Wollstonecraft. We will look at another such voice in the work of uh, W.E.B. Du Bois. Uh, here, I would say, we are looking at the, the voice of uh, the marginalized uh, voice of the, uh, of the gay person, of uh, gay man or women, although this book is definitely about gay men in particular and not gay women. And by using the word gay, I'm already kind of talking about it in, in terms that are very contemporary. One of the things that we find when we read Simmons, this book was originally published in 1892. Uh, privately printed. I went through a couple printings. I actually got a copy to my delight of the 1896. Uh, it, was, it was published uh, privately, more or less, and distributed to his friends. And after his death, had a little wider distribution. But it was groundbreaking, um, long essay about homosexuality, about male homosexuality. And, and even that word, gay, homosexual, homosexuality, is not the language of Simmons, he's writing so early in the process of rational discussion of, of, of this matter that, that terminologically things have not yet come together. Obviously, this term sexual inversion is not one that we would use in the contemporary discussion, but it was probably the best that he could find um, at the time. What we would call homosexuality, I think, is covered by what he calls sexual inversion. This is a, a remarkable book, uh, not just of its time, but a remarkable book in general. I'm very glad to find it because I was looking for something that could be put up with uh, people like Wollstonecraft and Du Bois as works that are truly classic expressions of, um, well, it, I was looking for a classic expression of, of gay rights in, in, in the way that Wollstonecraft is an ex, a, classic expression of women's rights or that uh, Du Bois is a classic expression of African-American rights. And I, I think that this book stands up at the level is, is at the same level as those books, which is saying a lot. Uh, one of the things we do have to keep in mind is yes, it was written in 1890 ish. So it's not going to be describing things in terms that are like the way that we would talk about it. And one of the things to keep in mind is that it was written at a time when an Englishman like uh, Simmons, uh, whose sexuality, sexual orientation is uh, personally is something of a mystery. He was probably a gay or bisexual man in, in our way of describing it. But, but he lived during a time when, when homosexuality was a crime in England and people were put in jail for that crime. Most uh, famously in, in, in in Simmons' time, Oscar Wilde, great, uh, great playwright and writer, um, novelist, essayist. Uh, so it was very serious business and in a way too hot to handle, right? That's why he couldn't, he, he published it, uh, Simmons published this originally uh, anonymously in a very limited printing because he was probably afraid of, of perhaps of, of some sort of prosecution or at least scandal. Uh, because as he makes it clear to even discuss in serious terms, the issue of sexual inversion, what we would call homosexuality was, it was questionable. And the introduction to a certain degree is just an argument that this is something that we should be talking about. This is something that bears um, rational scientific investigation. Because one of the things that he says in the beginning, and, and this is just really so well done, is that sexual inversion, we might as well call it homosexuality, has always been around. 
but geographically it's found in every part of the world. And that historically it's found in every period. Um, and his initial argument is that, well, if there's something that's so persistent in, in human nature, so much a part of human civilization and culture, it would seem rather ridiculous if we weren't even allowed to talk about it. That's our first thing I think that he says. Is that it's, it's respectable uh, and, uh, you know, uh, a topic of, of conversation and inquiry and discussion. Of course, he doesn't just want to talk about homosexuality. He, he wants to make a larger point. And uh, well, that, that we'll wait to see what that is. But we can kind of see where he's going by looking at uh, this first section here, Christian, Christian opinion and vulgar error, vulgar errors. Uh, one of the things he does very quickly in these opening sections, chapters, I guess, is to you know, see where did the, what he calls the social antipathy against uh, homosexuality come from? Because certainly it wasn't always there. One of the one of his favorite points to make is that in Greek culture, it was perfectly acceptable and it was beyond acceptable. It was deemed in a way something admirable, love between men and physical, yes, physical love between men. And then everything changed, you know, in, in the Greek and Roman world, sort of the roots of Western culture, homosexuality, um, it may not have been universally seen as something proper, but it certainly wasn't anything anybody would ever say was horrible or a crime. And then somehow everything changed, you know? Um, and it's pretty clear where he thinks the turning point was in the edicts of Justinian. So what was that about? Gosh, what year was that? 638? Sorry, I'm showing my ignorance here. 538. Um, that, that things changed as, as Europe became a Christian society and changed from being sort of the, what he would call the pagan society, the pre-Christian society of Greece and Rome, it became more homophobic. Um, and, you know, uh, there is a homophobia in the Old Testament, let's face it. And there's definitely homophobia in the letters of, of Paul, Christian uh, letters, Christian New Testament sources. As he says, Jesus never mentioned the matter, um, but it is something that was discussed by Paul in, I think, Letter to the Romans, not the part we read, but other parts. Uh, and, you know, that is what it is. That is that homosexuality became not just a matter of personal morality, uh, the way one thought of it, but it became a matter of law to the point where the homosexuals are considered uh, enemies of the state. It's really something that is a, um, a phenomenon of the Judeo-Christian tradition, not the classical tradition of Greek, Greece and Rome. Uh, and so he recognizes that homophobia is, is so deeply ingrained in, in modern European societies that uh, he's got quite a mountain to climb in terms of what he's trying to do. And, and yes, I think to some degree what he's trying to do is to rehabilitate uh, the gay man. That is to, to show that the gay man is not a criminal, um, that he's just a man who has certain sexual orientation. Some, something that to our ears would sound very uh, moderate, that it's a very small thing to try to establish that homosexuality shouldn't be a crime, that there's nothing that is in intrinsically uh, corrupt or terrible about it. Um, something to our ears that might even seem absolutely self-evident, but writing in England and writing in the English language in the 1890s, that was not a uh, <laughs> widely held opinion. So it's something that he realizes he has to work pretty hard uh, to try to establish. And so, um, you know, I, 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 tell me what you think of this book or tell us what you tell your classmates, what you think of this book. It's a complex process because, you know, it's discussing a subject, which at the time didn't even really have a vocabulary to be talked about. So it takes a certain amount of effort, uh, reading it. One has to constantly keep in mind the time during which it was read, but it is 
something I, I think is a remarkable book, a remarkable document, and uh, something that will be more widely read in the future.